Good morning. It's Saturday, the 27th of February. And this is the first sunny day for quite a while. I'm just walking up the track to the forest garden. Up a track through a gate. On a hill near a wood. Where nobody goes. Up a track through a gate. The food forest grows with secrets and treasures for everyone's pleasure. And Rob's discover, Rob's discovery. You can see the the ramsons, the wild garlic is already starting to push up through. I've been a bit slack on the video front lately with these short, dark, cold days. So I thought I'd spend 10 or 15 minutes showing you around at all the jobs I haven't done in the garden. can see my hedge laying, my first attempt at it, my first attempt five or six years ago was it now? Oh that sounds a bit flashy. It's lasted well, it's restored what was a very gappy hazel hedge to a nice thick impenetrable one. So when the cows are being driven up and down here for milking and they don't push through. There's a horse box trailer that I spontaneously acquired a couple of months ago. It was one of those coffee induced moments where I thought it would be a great idea to turn it into a tiny house or tiny home. It's going quite well actually, although I don't know how I thought I'd have the time to actually do it along with everything else. And the idea is that perhaps people who want to come and help me in the garden can stay there in exchange for helping, maybe at some point. Let's see how it goes. Daffodils are out. I'd like to say that's the first sign of spring, but according to Somerset law, it's not officially spring until you can step on 12 daisies with one foot. I see no daisies, only mud. My one surviving colony of honeybees has come out today for the first time. Let's say hello to the bees who lived. Hello girls. What are you collecting? Oh yeah, you've got some pollen. Pollen on your legs there. That's a good sign. I don't remember the colour, but is that daffodil pollen? Snowdrop pollen? Something else, I reckon. It's quite interesting how often the colour of pollen is nothing like the plant. Bluebell pollen being black, for example. I think that's right. Lots of mess to tidy up, lots of half-finished projects. The main thing I haven't done yet that I absolutely must do in the next week is I've failed to scythe the acre of meadow areas around the forest garden and then I failed to strim it during the winter. Strimming's what I do when I leave it too late to scythe and it all flops over and now there is a thatch of matted grass on top, suppressing all the wild flowers and grasses that are trying to push up through it. So if I don't rake it all up, if I don't strim it and rake it all up and remove it and pile it up on my vegetable beds in the next week, I'll lose all the wild flowers that have taken hundreds of years to establish themselves here. So that's a priority. I need to prune about 40 fruit trees this is the orchard section, all the cherries and plums and damsons and apples. I shan't have to prune them very much eventually, but just whilst they're still young and growing to get their shape. That's um, Duckingham Palace, 
Well, it's Duckingham Palace at one end and Cluckingham Palace at the other for the ducks and chickens. It's their new enclosure. It's supposed to be foxproof, but I haven't finished it yet because things take ages. It's made from repurposed posts and rails, the cheap way. And there's my Billy Goat's Gruff bridge here, so I can go trip, trap, trip, trap over the bridge and watch out for the trolls. It's because there's a bit of a goose sluice just here from where the geese overnight in here. Then all the goose muck is gravity fed under this sluice down into the pond of all the duck muck. <laughs> Goose sluice and duck muck. I like it. And then I can clear the pond out a couple of times a year and use that lovely rich sediment on the beds. Again, another job to do somehow, sometime. I really thought by now in year nine that I'd have loads to eat over the winter time, but I'm still working on the perennial ground layer. And although there's potentially a lot to eat, I just can't be bothered to harvest most of it. Although I do have a lot of food that I harvested in the autumn that I've stored. Like um, this ochre did extremely well down here. Look at that. Oh, cake harvest. I often leave little treats for my future self. Hmm. Thank you, past self. Mm -hmm. The perennial leeks. Perennial leeks are pushing back up. I ought to have mentioned that the solar system, solar panels on the yurt, even with these short dark days, well today's not dark, they are doing exceedingly well and I've not yet run out of electric. Mugwatch pushing back up through and the miniature polytunnel, my sunken greenhouse number two, that I made last spring in my video, that spring update. You can see it being constructed. All my plants, my tender plants, are overwintering beautifully in here. And according to, oh, sorry, I shouldn't have tried to eat, ah, cake. I shouldn't have tried to eat that cake whilst recording this. All those overwintering plants, it's not frozen in there. Even though it's been minus eight outside, Inside, they're still, they're still not frozen, so I'm mightily pleased with that. It's because it's sunk in the ground. That's where I harvested the ochre. And actually, I need to plant the ochre back out in the greenhouse today in pots. So all those roots I haven't eaten, I'm going to plant them in pots and then, and then um, plant them back outside again in May. And start the cycle again and today is the very best day to do it because today is a full moon i think it's called the snow moon because typically it snows around this time so in about four or five hours time the full moon will be rising behind me just here And being a full moon, it's the best time to plant lots of things, actually. So I need to sow quite a few seeds today in the greenhouse. All the things that I intend, some of the things I intend to grow this year, some of the annuals as well. You can see that I've mulched this one bed, but I've got about 40 other beds to mulch. And that's all I've managed to do. And I need to do all these before the spring. So... I don't think I'll do it. I said I'd mulch, mulch that, but actually my dad did it. <laughs> I haven't even done that myself. 
all the things I planted yet last year, most of them are beginning to push back up through. It's really working. There's this sweet, clumping, tender, edible bamboo here. The demo garden, the demonstration garden, was a complete failure. I planted 50 of the finest perennial specimens to try and make a, a miniature forest garden here. The microcosm of the macrocosm. And then I had a lot of gardening work on in May. And it was a very dry May in England, if you remember. And everything died. So I'm starting again this year. Well, not everything died. The rosemary has survived, as has the garlic, the marigolds, the skirret. And I can see some... What's that? Oh, chives. Hmm, the chives have made it. That's good. Nothing else has. Mm. Mm. Cake with butter. Hmm. Good old tree kale. Tree collard. Mm. Thank you. Oh, I didn't ask you first. Sorry, you're quite easy going, aren't you? I thought I'd never get tired of kale, but it's the only winter greenery that I've really been eating. It doesn't really go with cake. I'll leave it for a minute. Mm. The Eliagnus umbellata. The autumn olive. My favourite bush. It's doing very well. See, it's sprouting again. This is a cutting from the mother tree. Over there somewhere. I've got 12 of these. They grow very well from cuttings. See you later. Lots of piles of rocks and logs around the place. They look a little untidy, but I mostly leave them there because it's the frog mating season at the moment and it gives them a place to hide. Yesterday morning, I was having coffee in the yurt and I heard a, heard a terrible squealing sound and I came out and one of the drakes had a frog dangling in its mouth, in its beak, in its bill. And I chased it and wrestled it to the ground and all the ducks were going berserk. They were all competing, seeing who was going to get to eat this prize frog. And I pinned the drake to the ground and got the frog from its beak. I noticed it had a scar across its head. And it was Green Frog, my friend, the one I rescued and nursed back to health in the greenhouse about three years ago, after I accidentally caught it with my strimmer. And I, I was a little bit angry with it. I told it off for being out in the day when all these monsters are about. And fortunately he wasn't harmed and I put him in the pond down there. The pond, the only pond that's duck proof, fortunately. And he swam down to the cool, safe depths so hopefully he won't be so foolish again to be out when the ducks are. But look at the next generation of frogs. This is very, very exciting. I shouldn't have used my telephone for this. The camera is not brilliant. But I was being spontaneous. Look at that, a frog spawn. I really feared for the amphibious population here when I got the ducks. As brilliant a job as they're doing with the slugs, they, they do eat frog spawn and froglets. And if they were able to get into that bathtub, which they may do yet, they'll just gobble it down like caviar. This greenhouse has been pretty good for the last six years, very functional. But now my shoddy workmanship is taking its toll and it's falling apart. See, it needs to come down. This was a tropical paradise last summertime with lemons and peaches and avocados and grapes. Those trees are still here. I gave them a quite hard prune back a couple of days ago because 
had an offer of help from my friend Sam, who said he'd help me rebuild the greenhouse in as cheap as way as possible. And we're going to build, rebuild it using these, I forget what they're called, but we're going to go for the geodesic type greenhouse with these little hubs that you can get that you attach wooden poles or posts to, to make a, a dome. So no doubt I'll try and make a video about that. Oh, look, peach blossom, it's coming out. Yeah, I suppose it's a couple of months ahead here being so much warmer. It's said that for every layer of plastic you put on a polytunnel or greenhouse, it moves it 500 miles south. So this is the same climate as the north of France. So I suppose, yeah, peach, boss, peach blossom could be on its way. Anyway, that's another thing to do. Oh, it's 15 minutes now. I wanted to keep this short. I'll wrap things up here. I still haven't harvested my yakon. Potentially there's a very good yakon crop and you're supposed to dig it up before the first frost, but the first frost was ages ago. So I fear for those tender frost sensitive tubers. Again, I might do that today. That's some um, Dorbenton's kale, more kale. It's a slightly sweeter one than the tree kale, but not as long lived. Doesn't get as big either. I haven't even finished my willow wattle fencing. I've only done that section that I made in that video back in November. Again, so much to do. I mean, they're all satisfying, wholesome jobs, but okay, well, I best stop recording myself and get on with some jobs. But nice to see you all again. I hope your Februarys have gone well. And if not, then I hope your March is better. Okay, enjoy the full moon tonight. Although having said that, I probably won't get around to uploading this for another few days. So, um, happy March. See you soon. And thank you for watching again. Bye. Bye. Bye.